Although we had been warned by some of the greatest political thinkers of the 19th century, by de Tocqueville and Lord Acton, that socialism means slavery, we have steadily moved in the direction of socialism. And now that we have seen a new form of slavery arise before our eyes, we have so completely forgotten the warning that it scarcely occurs to us that the two things may be connected. Yeah, I need the reposition. I mean it, I see the vision. Demeanors of combatants, staff the mass malicious. Leak the last inscription, appease the past commission. Catawall the leap into this catatonic crimson tide. Synthesize, split and win the liquids rise. Slid against so desperately endeavor to convince the tribe. The tribe. Lionize, mix it with the simple times. Little by little, he is getting them to sense the crime. Litany literally hits the eyes. Cities fall, the lemmings march off rhythm in a single file. Finalize, isolate the diatribe. Might imbibe a tonic, I've been mentioning with sobs inside. Cyanide, liars get the lies to rise. Binding the contrivances of minds that get annihilated. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you could also find me on theconsciousresistance.com and theseedsofliberty.com. So today we have Jared Howe, who's a voluntarist, conscious rapper. His uh, his rapping name is uh, Jerry One. That's uh, spelled J three four four three, and then uh, le- uh, number one spelled out. Um, so you can find him on Facebook, uh, his Facebook page, Jerry, um, Jerry one spelled out that way. Also, um, you find him as uh, Jared Howe. Um, and he's also on SoundCloud. That's the main uh, way you can find him just by, uh, typing Jerry one. And, uh, you can also Google him, um, by typing rap game, Bill Hicks. So he's a, uh, he's an awesome, uh, c- um, supporter of, uh, stand-up comedy one of, one of the best one of the greatest uh unfortunately he was you know died too young right but <laughs> that's, what, Absolutely. I, that's what they say right i, I hear um a, a quote it says um uh saints die young and pricks live forever you know <laughs> <laughs> it's so true isn't it true? So I, true you know it's like people some people just who should die don't you know it, it sucks but that like happens. <laughs> uh dick cheney for instance right yeah you know <laughs> it's, name any politician there <laughs> or know? jenny yellen i don't want i don't want to be too mean but you know i mean you know their policies do kill people so they just they just seem like i don't know they seem like the undead you know i don't know <laughs> well it's appropriate they they created the zombie bank so it's like it's it's projection of their inner selves onto reality as a whole right exactly exactly so uh yeah you can also find him on youtube uh jerry one um he's not too active on youtube but uh hopefully he will be to uh you know i gotta gotta exploit every every uh medium that we can right to spread the message absolutely so um so yeah we're gonna talk about a few of his songs um uh one of his recent one feel the burn of totalitarianism which uh discusses uh talks about bernie sanders our um our uh, KFC icon, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, state tricks, and uh, the state is evil. So he's uh, he's famous for um, uh, you know subtle names. So that's good. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so Jared, uh, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I I, uh, I found you on YouTube. You commented on one of my videos. I'm like, wow. And I checked out your channel and like pretty cool stuff. And my brother's a rapper, so course i'm i'm drawn to uh you know rappers who uh want to spread the message of liberty and i'm like you know what damn it i gotta interview you so (laughs) so here you are (laughs) absolutely man thanks again for having me on yeah so um so maybe uh let's start off with um you know just give us a background as to how you got to volunteerism and anarchy you know how you know what was your path what what, like books and podcasts uh, influenced you I don't know so much books and podcasts. My path was very winding and zigzaggy. I think I started probably a long time ago with just, I want to call it 2006, like 9-11 truth, like that whole thing, the conspiracy theories around that really got me passionately motivated to want to do something about government corruption and I didn't know what to do. So I kind of ended up falling into like the whole Ron Paul campaign, which gave me, I think, a lot of correct answers like, um, you know, and central banks and the war stuff like that, which is really obvious to me. But it didn't give me a lot of the whole, you know, the principles behind liberty and self-ownership and then you know, like the non-aggression principle and stuff like that. So even though a lot of the <clears throat> answers I was coming to and a, a lot of the things that I was, you know, um, even making music about or talking about 
were influenced by me wanting to change the world. I don't think I had, you know, they were inf- influenced by that, but also influenced by, you know, those types of principles, like the non-aggression principle, um, even just like basic economics. I didn't have any of that at all until recently. So even as embarrassing as it is to admit up until probably earlier this year, I thought that, you know, government was necessary just to maintain a monopoly on the banks. Just not have it be like a fiat money type situation. It should be like a 100% reserve situation. And I had another friend who is extremely into Austrian economics and Mises and uh, Rothbard and all those dudes. Um, be like, dude, you got this all wrong. And he put <laughs> the anarcho-capitalist manifesto in my hands by Lou Rockwell and gave me a copy of uh, uh, No Treason, Constitution and No Authority by nice. Lysander Spooner. That, that would do it. <laughs> that and uh, The Law by Frederick Bastiat. Beautiful. I read those three and I was like, well, I just wasted a whole bunch of fucking time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, I guess it just sometimes it just takes some, you know, some uh, push by, you know, our close friends. Um, yeah, and I was minarchist for embarrassingly like seven or eight years. It sucks. The, uh, the Anarcho Capitalist Manifesto, I never read that one. Is that, a, is, is that a, a short one? A short book? It is short, like 200 pages, I think. Not even, it just crushes so many left wing narratives without even trying. It's awesome. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of Lou Rockwell's books on my list. Um, but of course, you know, I think most of us have. Uh, <laughs> the ever expanding to read list <laughs> yeah and, definitely. and the ever shrinking have read list <laughs> <laughs> right exactly <clears throat> so yeah i mean uh yeah yeah i mean for, i mean for myself i um i started out like uh, as more as a democrat more because my family were democrats i didn't really care about politics i was more indifferent and then uh you know i got i got into uh uh, first, I was into precious metals, and I and I stumbled upon Jeff Borwick and his Dollar Vigilante, and then I, you know, Creature from Jekyll Island, and then, you know, then then you know um, everything with um, Rothbard, like you know, what has government done to our money, and uh, um, you know, the state uh, case for the hundred percent gold dollar, and um, you know, and then uh, Anatomy of the State, that was a big one for me. So, yeah. So the, reading the big books then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but they're tiny. But again, they're like you know, just pack a punch. It's like it's like an intellectual slap in the face, you know. <laughs> I wish I had started there, man. Well, I mean, we all start somewhere, so uh, you know. Glad, <clears throat> glad you're here. Glad you're spreading the message using your Thanks, music. Man. So, so yeah. So, how long have you been rapping? And and uh, you know, did you always rap? Um, you know, was your rap always? Uh, had the freedom message, or you know, did, how is that? Yeah, in general. I mean, I I can't say that it was explicitly freedom because i used to be a minarchist so yeah. i was kind of rapping about like constitutional type things but i was rapping about like self-ownership okay I, I was rapping about not initiating force that type of thing and even before that playing like uh guitar and metal bands and making music that was about the same type of thing so it's always been like a independent like a libertarian type message if not explicitly freedom since left-wing libertarianism isn't explicitly freedom mm-hmm. if that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> have you have you um been accused of being a, a right-wing nut yet <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah one of my one of my favorite memes is you see uh the, the kid the, from karate kid and he's like he's like telling you a sensei you know you know um um <laughs> you know, Democrats call me a right wing nut, and Republicans call me a left wing, you know, uh, liberal nut. And uh, and he's like, "That's because you're starting to make sense." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's the reality of the situation. That's total truth. You know, it's 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 that false dichotomy, right? If if they if they don't understand what you're saying, you must be the other guy, <laughs> the other camp. You know. <laughs> And I probably I don't I don't even dare to go back through conversations I've had with people on the internet, but I've probably been like that to people, you know, as a minarchist and like forcing people, you know, if you don't if you don't vote for Ron Paul, then you're evil, or if you don't vote at all, you're evil. I, I, I'm probably just I've probably done that before, as em- embarrassing as it is to say. <laughs> See that? Hey, I I voted for Obama in t- 2008. We all have to confess our sins, you know before we die right <laughs> i can't say I, I can't claim to have done that i was actually <laughs> voting go, for far, i was right? vo- no i was voting for ron paul and oh, okay, i voted okay. for ron paul in 2008 okay okay um but again i, I voted just because uh you know my family's like yeah you vote yeah, yeah i'll <laughs> vote yeah who do i vote obama all right i'll vote for obama no problem <laughs> like i didn't get much thought into it 
So. Even now, I mean, I'm not really convinced that voting even makes a difference as much as like talking to each other makes a difference. You know what I mean? I I voted in the local election here this past, not this year, last November, just because one of the representatives that was running explicitly had Ron Paul's endorsement, seemed to be up on Est- Austrian economics and stuff like that. And I said, you know, what could it hurt to get him into office, you know? Mm-hmm. And now that he's he won and he's been in office now for almost a year and his main objective has been, <clears throat> excuse me, scaling back the welfare state, and the the blowback is just unfucking believable, and like the hatred, like you hate poor people, you hate mm-hmm. old people, like all this right, right, right. bullshit, and it's like that's what happens to anybody who's willing to stand up in front of everybody and make the hard decisions, right. and. Stefan Molyneux makes such an excellent point about that is what happens, what would have happened if Ron Paul had won the presidential election? What would have happened if he had returned the control of interest rates to the free market, if he had scaled back all the government programs in in this environment where the vast majority of everyone's either a socialist or a fascist? People would fucking hate libertarianism and freedom and voluntarism for at least 100 or 200 years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder that too. What if he was elected? And and I think um, I'm happy that he wasn't in a way because I think he might have been assassinated. <laughs> um, there's that. There's that too. You know, um, because I think the interests, you know, the special interests are so entrenched, and you know, the root goes so deep that um, I think you know you would you would not only be like affecting those people on welfare and completely dependent on government, but you would affecting those people that profit from you know all the uh you know fa- the subsidies and the favoritism and the oh yeah know, like anybody who work anybody who's part of a union uh right. anybody anybody who works for a company that subsists off government contracts and mm-hmm. you know grants and stuff like that yeah totally you'd have the vast majority of everybody railing against you although i think it was the 2000 and 14 elections maybe where it was like 55% non participation rate mm and I don't, I don't remember the exact poll that came out recently, but I think it was like between fifty and seventy percent don't trust the government or think that the government's corrupt. And I think those are pretty good numbers. Yeah, that's those true. Are- the, that's true. The um, um, yeah, yeah, trust in 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 Congress in general is I think is is plummeting really, um, compared to like the seventies and eighties where you know it's really high. People people trusted their politicians at that time, but uh, you know, no more. I mean. Uh, and and I guess that's a good thing. Um, and and I go back and forth with you know because you know I've always held the view that that voting is violence and it's always imposing you know violently imposing your view on your neighbor against their will. So it's a violation of consent. But um, but you know I, like Jeremy from the Seas Liberty podcast, he 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 talks about voting from the perspective of of Lysander Spooner, which is more like in self defense. Like like you know you're put in the battlefield and you don't want to kill somebody, but it's either you kill or be killed. So, I have a friend who makes that same point, the voting and self-defense point. I, right. I totally understand that. In the same sense, Lysander, does, Lysander Spooner also makes the point that uh, government only exists because of the support of the population. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, voting is the exact method through which the population supports it. So yep, I, yep. I agree with Lysander Spooner that it doesn't, it's not consent. Voting is not giving your consent. It's not, it is self-defense mm-hmm. against, in, in one sense, but it's at the same time, it's not, it is support. So it is support, yeah. but it's not consent. I, I differentiate between that two, but the two, two of those things, but you're definitely supporting the existence of the system if you think you can change anything by voting. Right. <clears throat> right. And if you're tr- actively trying to convince anybody else to try to vote, which I wholeheartedly regret trying to do for seven years. Yeah, like it reminds me of that, that meme uh, with Boromir, you know, when he finds a ring, right? And he's like, he's like let's, uh, yeah, let's use the state to end the state. Oh. <laughs> and then you have Gandalf is like, I suppose you think that's pretty clever. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically what what you know people you know when people talk about voting in self defense is like um you know like 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 uh, and, and Stefan Mani he made a great analogy one time that I really resonated with me. He's like um you know the state is like is like all of us collectively um blowing hot air and keeping these people in the air, right? And they're only in the air because we keep blowing the bump in the air, right? And once we oh, stop, right, all right. we have to do is withdraw participation, right? And stop blowing, and they all crash to right, the ground, right? Right, or or the or the uh, the other the other um, 
the cartoon that I saw with the you know the politician speaking on a plank over <clears throat> over a cliff, right? Everyone's standing on oh, a plank. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's the first thing that popped into my head when you were explaining that metaphor with the blowing into the air. Oh. Yeah, exactly. The people standing on a board, mm -hmm. they move off the plank, and right. the politician just falls off the cliff. Right. 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 They're they're you know they they don't. You know they they don't espouse any um, you know economic truths. They don't they don't speak to the you know philosopher nature and people. They they speak to the you know the reptilian primitive instinctual limbic system <laughs> portion of everyone. You know my hope, feels hope change right <laughs> yeah black white Buzz, spoon buzz, buzzword <laughs> <laughs> spoon. yeah. <laughs> rich poor, hate rich you know steal more so yeah it's like it's like are you seriously thinking that you're looking at these people for like you know profound economic truths like come on <laughs> so. even if not economic truths just like basic common sense right, right. if somebody promises you something for free <laughs> yeah, and exactly. they don't have any money to pay for it where is that money going to come from they're like well well they're not going to have to tax people more i'm like there's other places that money could come from that is not legit right, one right. of those places is counterfeiting exactly <laughs> that, that's that's that, that's the big one the other one is promising the unborn on the bond market right exactly. it's, it's literally human traffic Trafficking. You're, you, these people are arguing for paying for things that they think would be a good idea. Just they don't have any reasoning or, or argument behind why it would be a good idea. Not that any of us would disagree with people being more educated or help more healthy or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But they want to enslave the unborn with debt to pay for it and act like they have the moral high ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, you you just hate. You know, you just hate poor people. <laughs> no, I don't hate poor people, but I, I want to find a solution that helps everybody become more prosperous and have more real wealth that doesn't involve pointing guns at fetuses. Yeah. Or you know, not pointing guns at fetuses, but <laughs> pointing guns at parents so that they promise the fetus into the system once it's born and make sure it goes to the government you know, administered and theft funded schools and making sure that it enters the system so that they can shave off 50% of whatever it earns and, you know, break, break a bunch of windows. But, but Jared, you're just an idealist extremist. So, so yeah, <laughs> come back to the I, real I, world. <laughs> I, idealism, I like a priori, uh, <sighs> reasoning is idealism like two plus two is four yeah. are you sure two plus two is always four you're just an idealist <laughs> hey a squared plus b squared is c squared on all right triangles are you sure you're just an idealist <laughs> i don't believe in universals what the fuck <laughs> Mathematics, universal. Come on, <laughs> stop, Come on. stop, stop, stop talking my my list. Supply and demand. What? <laughs> oh man. So so um. All right. So we we talked about the uh, the glory of free stuff. So so we should. Uh, it's a great segue into your <laughs> your your rap song, "Feel the Burn." Uh. So so can you uh, talk about that and 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 what you were you know what, what you were rapping about? Yeah, I mean, I basically just made that because a lot of my news feed on Facebook, a lot of the bumper stickers I see in public and a lot of the conversations that I see happening in public spaces about politics all revolve, revolve around Bernie Sanders. And it's not that I hate him more than any other politician because I think they're all basically baby eaters, mm -hmm. people, <laughs> people that want to enslave babies. Right. But um, he seems to inspire the most enthusiasm and hope mm. or uh, naivety that things could actually be changed through the government. And it's not just that he's he's the most popular one. It's that his principles are so fucked, dude. Mm -hmm. For the reasons we were just talking about, you're going to mm -hmm. promise what apparently is $18 trillion worth of shit for free when there's yeah. already $18 trillion in debt. Where is that money going to come from? And I mean, in another sense, I really don't care. It's just blowing off steam. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want to use some harsh language that I wouldn't, otherwise use in my Facebook news feed or with people that I work with or mm. anything like that. But I feel like there's probably a whole lot of other people out there that feel that same way. So I more or less made that song for them as, you know, made that for them as well so that they could share in my blowing off of steam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I made um, a, a tweet recently. Um, I think somebody posted a Bernie Sanders uh, quote or, or image. And, and I said, you know, when somebody, Promise, or when a politician promises you something for free, hold on to your wallet because you're about to get robbed. 
Exactly. <laughs> there's there's really no such thing for, no such thing as free. It's the it's the biggest con in the world. And anybody who's ever tried to like take advantage of a free offer, like call in somewhere, call now for your free. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. like what the fuck? How do you not know that there's no such thing as free? <laughs> I know, like, like when you're when you're surfing the web, right? Or you're on you're on Facebook, and you see those those ads on the side, free iPad, and you know you know the socialists are the ones that are going to click on that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> give me that. Give me every computer virus you have, as long as it comes with an iPad, which it won't. <laughs> which it won't. You don't need to get the iPad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you're right, Bernie Sanders. You know, you know when when that free word, that's a, that's a big one. You know, you just throw around something, you know, free, and you're going to catch. The ears of you know economically ignorant you know people just thinking based on their emotions and um and you're gonna get a big support you know that's i mean just- you get a lot of that with donald trump though too right right i mean donald donald trump and i was listening to peter schiff's show today he made mm-hmm. an excellent point about trump in that he is perfectly appealing to everybody by seemingly promising everything in a way that makes it seem like he can deliver on his promise and he can't, but, pe- <laughs> but people are buying it up because they're having an emotional reaction to it. They're like, well, he's not, he's not an establishment politician and maybe he wants to change in things and maybe because everybody hates him, that's a good thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I think that's more scary than anything. I mean, I think they expect people to hate whoever they serve up. I think they've done the market research on that at the very least. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Donald Trump, in that way, inspires as much enthusiasm among people who are just fed up with it as he does with people who are totally naive. Mm. You know what yeah, I mean? So- I, I, I saw a, a video of, of Donald Trump a couple of days ago where he was talking about Obamacare, and the guy asked him, so what, do you, so what would you do if you were elected? What would you do about Obamacare? And he's like, oh, I'll scrap the whole thing. Oh, yeah, so what would you do? What would you do after that? I, I put in my own universal health care. Everybody's <laughs> going to be covered. Everyone. No one's not, you know, not going to be anyone that's going to be, uh, you know, left out. Oh, really? So how's it going to be? Who's going to pay for that? The government, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, the government. The unborn babies that we're going to enslave. We got it covered. Don't worry. You're not going to be alive for it. Uh, yeah, that reminds me of, uh, of, of, of a Bastiat quote. Is like, everyone wants to live at the expense of the state, but you know the state lives at the expense of everyone else, right? They don't realize. It's a snake eating its own tail. Yes, yes, yes. It's like, where does it go? You know, is the government a business? Does it earn its, uh, its income through you know, uh, offering a superior product? No, it steals. No, nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. No, it's, it's not a gun. I have, I've literally had people tell me, what, there's no guns? I'm like, oh good, there's no, there's no guns? Go- nobody in the government has any guns? So you're telling me that I've been wasting my fucking time like <laughs> getting licenses and paying for insurance that the government makes me buy and right, right. paying taxes and all this shit? I could have just not done that because there's no guns? I've been doing this thing, this, this, I've been doing this voluntarily this whole time. Wow. I, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the gun is the, it's the, it's the uh, you know it's the gun in the room that nobody wants to see or acknowledge. Um, and it makes people really uncomfortable when you mention it too. Oh, and it big takes time. A, big time. takes a lot of wind out of their sails, especially. I'm, and I'm sure a lot of people have really good intentions too, and they get really mad when you take the wind out of their sails. Mm-hmm. But intentions don't really matter, right? The road to hell is mm-hmm. paved with good intentions. And mm-hmm. people say, "Well, we should educate everyone." Well, it's like, wait a second. Everybody should be educated for sure to some degree. They should be educated, but nobody should be stolen from to pay for that education. And really, the only people that should have opportunities for education are people who can capitalize on those opportunities. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, if people he shouldn't be pushing people into school who don't really want to be there, who it's not going to help. But that's what's happening. Right. The vast majority of college kids don't know what the fuck they're doing there. Yeah. And, yeah. and so the market's saturated with people who have useless degrees that people never even put any research into knowing whether or not there would be demand for what they specialized in or they just didn't specialize any, in anything and got like a liberal arts degree or something like that. The market's completely saturated with college graduates and the, mm-hmm. the value of a college grad's depleted so far that they say, well, we got to have $15 minimum wage so our college grads can get paid. Like, what <laughs> the fuck are they doing working at McDonald's? Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, it's like you know, the, um, <clears throat> it's like the Hegelian dialectic. You know, the, the state creates the problem 
right? Then people clamor to the politicians to solve the problem, and yeah. then their solution <laughs> creates another problem. <laughs> which, it's it's a right? it's an infinite series of broken windows. Is all it is. It's just <laughs> broken window after broken window after broken window after broken window, and it just makes society worse off. It's all it does. Oh, you know, t- uh, speaking of broken window, I, I actually um, so, so I'm, my mother's a socialist, right? <laughs> I just answer the phone. I gotta say, I, at least once a show, I say that. So, 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 um, something broke, like the jar broke on the uh, in the kitchen, and then it was. I'm like, perfect opportunity. So I'm like, D- have you heard of the broken window fallacy? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good opportunity to get a new cookie jar. And, <laughs> like, actually, or- because what also what also. Um, prompted me to 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 uh, explain that was because she said i hate it when things break because you have to take like 15 minutes out of your day that you weren't planning on spending on cl- cleaning up broken glass and clean up broken glass you know that's 15 minutes lost i'm like exactly <laughs> now <But> she apply <laughs> that to government <laughs> just make the connection yeah and and she has a business right so so um so I'm like, do you think you would? Well, I don't. I don't think I asked her this, but I was, maybe I should. I was thinking <laughs> about asking. Do you think if a Mack truck plows into the, your building, would that be good and economic good because you're you're providing jobs for the construction workers <laughs> and the people who mm-hmm. repair the the how you know the roof and the door and the windows? Is that a, is that an overall good? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> That's. You should. You might have to draw some parallels for her, though, yeah. between breaking jars and, you know what I mean? It's a wa- it is a waste of time. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Like, you talk about broken window fallacy. Like, and, you know, when, when, you re- when I learned that, it's like you really realize that the government is one giant broken window fallacy, right? It's- That's all it is. Everything it, everything it, is, everything it does, it, pr- it presents itself to the solution it caused 100, 100% of the time, yeah. every single time. Yeah, that diverts diverts you know precious resources and capital from you know um, ways that it could have been used to actually enhance people's lives and increase their standard of living, and rather it's being used to it's funneled either to you know for war, for invasions, or or uh, or you know being forced to um, start jobs that nobody wants. <laughs> well, to the point that the the currency and circulation is not even. It's not even redeemable for anything. Right, Each right. individual, it's a fiduciary media, media right? So right. every unit of cir- uh, currency in circulation is somebody owes on it. Mm. And so they're basically just, it's a, it's a fucking Ponzi scheme. And they just need more people constantly. Yeah. That's all it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, so um, maybe can you, um, can you describe your other uh, songs? So you have, we have State Tricks and The State is Evil. Can you, can you go into those? Yeah, I mean, I could probably describe both those songs at the same time as they're very similar in topic. Uh-huh. But they they both have Stefan Molyneux quotes in them, and they're awesome. both see, basically... Just, see, just because you said that, now I have to listen to them, so awesome. You know, actually, <laughs> if, if that makes a difference, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that a lot of my songs have cool. Stefan Molyneux <laughs> samples in them. Excellent. excellent. But, no, I mean, I, I just, I'm always trying to make the point that the state is evil, right? And just, in a sense, blow off steam. But with hip-hop, you're, or at least I am... It's it's a lot of left leaning people in the hip hop culture in general. Like they have a lot of contempt for government, but at the same time, they their contempt for government is not that government exists. It's that they want government to be doing something in their benefit instead of somebody else's benefit. Mm, right. So I try I try not to be too explicit with like my writing style. I like to leave room for interpretation so that people who aren't even though my titles are like, you know, the state is evil or the state tricks or something like that. If you were to just hear the song and not see the title, if it just randomly came on, you know, a, a podcast or a radio, you wouldn't you might not necessarily think that it was an anti-government song. You might be able to hmm attach your own meaning to it and i mean mm. every song is different to agree to a degree those songs aren't really like that but there is still a lot of stuff that's open to interpretation because i don't just explicitly spoon feed the uh the meaning of the content to people i don't nice. keep it kind of thick yeah that's interesting uh yeah yeah because yeah, my brother's into rap so you know he constantly talks about um you know rap and how yeah yeah hip-hop does have 
uh, roots in being subversive and you know anti status quo and you know especially you know the police right <laughs> yeah exactly a, a lot of but I'll, most of it's like fuck the police and right. fucking go kill a cop and I'm right. really not about that at all right, I can right, see right, why right. people would be angry about it but think about it dude oh my god it's just like the the worst possible reaction you have every you got everything that's wrong down to a T but your solution to it is just gonna make the problem so much worse and yeah yeah yeah, it's true. Yeah, violence. Yeah, violence only begets violence. Like you know, you know, people. When I talk about you know the stuff that I talk about, and, I, and they see what I uh, I write about, you know, some people say, "All right, let's start the revolution." I'm like, no, <laughs> let's not, please. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> because which you know which violent revolution ever produced a peaceful. Uh, you know, actually, peaceful government is an oxymoron. So <laughs> none, none. And if you have a violent revolution, when you start with a bunch of young socialists, what type of situation do you end up with, right? Yeah, exactly. it's not good. Exactly. It's not good. Yeah, I mean that's how it's basically how Hitler came to power, right? People, uh, you know, fed up and angry, and you know, you all of a sudden you have a brutal dictator, and everyone, you know, obeyed his every whim. And what happened? Oh, oh yeah. my God, a few million people died. Okay, socialism is how they hook young people on government it really is it really is Fas fascism's for the rich people getting the rich people into government socialism's for the young people and the poor people hmm. and it works so fucking good on on young people that don't know anything about economics everything should be free you know college should be free that's that's a pretty common one because a lot of people get forced into college on loans that they're never going to get paid be able to pay back so it's a huge conflict of interest right they so they want college to be free because they made a whole bunch of stupid fucking decisions hmm. that they couldn't stand up to their parents or they couldn't stand up to the people in their life that were pressuring them or they just genuinely wanted to do it and had no idea where they were going you know what i mean but <laughs> If you, if you look behind everything that those types of people want, like $15 an hour minimum wage, have you ever worked a job ever? You, you, <laughs> sweeping floors is not, it does not create $15 worth of value. It just right. doesn't. Right, it right. doesn't. You know what I mean? And people don't seem to understand that. They don't put the time in. They don't work hard. People, in my experience in the market, I live in a part of Maine where the average starting wage at call centers around here is like $13 an hour. And there's at least 10 call centers around here, and they're always hiring, hmm. always. And But people don't want to work. They're either too good to do it. They don't want to – I know some of it's verbal abuse, and I can understand why people wouldn't want to subject themselves to that. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no shortage of opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People just don't want to take those opportunities because they don't see them as valuable. They don't see a way to market them to, you know, as a, to the next opportunity. It's just a lack of imagination, dude, and it's an externalization of blame. They want to blame the government. Yeah, it's the government's fault, but it's not because the government's taking from – is giving to people who aren't you. It's because mm -hmm. the government exists. Exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The um, yeah. I, I I worked in a in a um, supermarket uh, my, my my first job uh, stacking uh, frozen food <laughs> for like uh, yeah something like the eight dollars an hour nine dollars something like that and uh, I I remember Stefan Maloney saying how um, you know your first job or jobs it are you know they're brutal because you know you you're probably gonna have a horrible boss who like verbally <laughs> abuses you most likely um yep. and and that's kind of it's kind of like boot camp you know it's like if you can get past that level you will have a much better time you know better bosses that respect you <laughs> but you have you have to go through that you have to everybody goes through that right and and what's funny is people act like those jobs are like long-term career jobs like you know, they're gonna, and that's why the, the fifteen dollar minimum wage. You know, that's why they they um they lobby for that. They're like, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna have this for the rest of my life. I gotta make fifteen dollars. So, right, exactly. So um so yeah so <clears throat> so before we go, can you um let people know like uh like how they can how they can find your work and you know and just just replug your your stuff again. Yeah, man, you can you can find me on Facebook. Just search my name, Jared Howe. Uh, J A R E D H O W E. If you search for Jerry One on Facebook, it'll most likely come up. There'll be a few extra letters and numbers in there. Don't worry about that. If you search Jerry One on SoundCloud, you'll find me. If you search Jerry One on Google, you'll find me. If you search Rap Game Bill Hicks, you'll find me. I unfortunately do not have a website. On the other hand, I do manage all of my social media. So if you're listening to my music and you're liking my music and you want to give me some feedback it's going to be me personally that you're interacting with awesome awesome um so so before we go if, if uh, i'd like to ask this of my guests if if somebody were to come up to you and they're like on the fence about volunteerism and anarchy and 
and uh, you know they're not sure about it, or or even maybe somebody that um, you know that you met that that you know you, if you want to drop some truth before you leave them, <laughs> what would you say to them to 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 like plant a seed in their mind and get them to really consider volunteerism? Volunteerism, you know, I really like one saying. I say a lot. Sometimes it gets a reaction. Sometimes it doesn't. <clears throat> I'm sure I borrowed it from somebody. I can't claim to have invented it, but it's if you're not a voluntary or a voluntarist then you basically are in support of forcing non-consensual or forcing interactions on people who never consented to them and who are minding their own business and usually people will fill in the blanks with terms like unconsensual or didn't consent and they'll, I think a lot of people's minds goes toward rape mm. and they they instantly see that and they're like wait a second but I'm not a volunteer uh voluntarist because reasons mm. it's like so i think that you're being unkind but they can't unhear that you know what i mean especially if since it hooks people into conversations and you say well the only alternative if you got them hooked you might as well say how does government pay for anything mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't sell anything or it it doesn't create anything of value it doesn't invest things for a return how does it how does it get money mm -hmm. it steals mm -hmm. and how it steals at gunpoint if people resist then they're Either they're shot or they're thrown into a cage. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a, that's a hard starting point for a lot of people. And I know it's not the, it's not the easiest sell, but I really just don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to, I, to be honest. Just to go along that, um, like, like, like if, you, if you said that to me, let's say I was a statist, right? I can imagine some people say, well... You're just an idealist because you think everyone's good. <clears throat> like you think everyone's going to be good, and uh, <laughs> and you know you're utopian. <laughs> so so what would you say to somebody like that? Okay, so everybody, you're saying that not everybody is good. So we need to have, and people can't be trusted. So we need to have a right. group of people who might not be good to have a monopoly on force and violence over everybody else. That makes right. sense, right? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I like the I like the short responses. Just cut straight to the point. They, that's the softest trick, isn't it? It's just running in circles and creating yeah. all these different circles, and it's just a it's a bunch. It's a waste of fucking time. Yeah. It's government is a gun to the head. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if that makes you uncomfortable, if you don't want to hear that, then don't fucking pay attention to me. I don't care what you have to say, but <laughs> as long as I've been saying, the more I say that, and the more I keep repeating that, and reminding people of that, a lot of people seem to be feeling my message so i don't know I'm, i can't say i'm doing it wrong yeah and, or, no one's really say i'm doing it wrong i'm not i'm not holding a gun to somebody's head right exactly yeah and uh, another way to say what you said is uh if you can't trust people with freedom how can you trust them with power no yeah exactly right? exactly so that's better. that's an awesome point to to hammer home but awesome conversation uh jared thanks a lot for um yes. for coming on the show really appreciate it Great talking to you, Danilo. I'd like to talk to you again soon. I'd love to get on the Seeds of Liberty podcast. You guys have some great conversations on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll uh, I'll contact them. You can uh, come on. We're always looking for for new, fresh guests. So cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely yeah, have you there. And I'd love to love to have you back on again here. Um, you know, I'm sure you're, you're you're always cranking out new songs all the time, right? So yeah, uh, actually, I forgot to mention I have a new song on SoundCloud every Sunday, and I for the last year. Nice. I've been doing that, so it's not going to stop anytime soon. If you're digging what I'm making, tune in every week. Oh, let me ask, dude, is there a way for people want to donate to you? Patreon, Bitcoin, PayPal? Uh, I don't really have open donation source, but I'll actually send you a link to my Bandcamp after this. Okay. If, if people want to go to Bandcamp, they can purchase or <clears throat> they can actually download some of my older material for free because I like the give stuff away for free but if you feel inclined you can donate money to me through pay uh through paypal on Bandcamp. yes please do you know if you like this stuff that's how you want to see more of things in the world you gotta you gotta let them know through uh through monetary support you know same thing with me if you like what i'm doing you know help me out bitcoin paypal or patreon please you know and even uh, if you don't i mean <clears throat> what would mean a lot to me is just the shares yeah share share the music share the podcast i really appreciate that stuff even even more than money i'm I'd, i always like having more money but it's not an imperative to have more of it for me right now. So yeah, awesome, great. So um, yeah, we'll definitely have you back on uh, when you come out with some awesome, you know, well, you know, a, a, a couple of more, you know, hard hitters. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a few things that we didn't get to as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can find a 
something oh, to talk about soon. Oh, yeah. There's always something going on in the status world, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So um, this is um, Peace Wanakism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and theconsciousresistance.com and theseedsofliberty.com. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take have a care. good one. Bye.